There's no single factor in this organization's growth that I attribute more success to than the fact that we were smart enough to operate aircraft when everybody else wasn't. Business aviation is a large and significant industry in the United States. No Plane, No Gain is about telling that story. In 2006, the nation's big airlines launched a campaign that was really designed to shift their taxes onto the business aviation community and to get more control of the nation's air traffic control system. Their plan in trying to do that was to disparage, discourage, create an image of business aviation that was at odds with who we really are and what the public would want to perceive. Dara, make sure our tea time is confirmed. Coming through, I've got a foursome here with an early tea time. Their efforts, their campaign, the ads they ran, really were not that successful because our community responded to them. We set the record straight and people seem to understand and agree that business aviation is important. But then, on November of 2008, three automobile manufacturers flew to Washington, D.C. to ask for a federal bailout. When those automobile executives were asked why they used the business airplane, they did not respond. And their response was enormously hurtful for our industry. Because they did not justify, because they did not explain, because they didn't defend their use of business aviation that day, a message went out that said business aviation must not be defendable, must not be justifiable. It must be excessive, unnecessary, perhaps in the way. In response to the automobile manufacturers, NBAA and others within the general aviation community have launched a straightforward advocacy campaign called No Plane, No Gain. Those words describe the benefits to the economy the benefits to users who uh, have travel requirements to places that are not served well by the airlines. And in fact, we've discovered that uh, companies who operate business aircraft uh, do better in their growth and in their financial performance than those who don't. So it's a pretty good message for us. When the No Plane, No Gain program launched in March of 2009, we initially went forward with advertisements in the national publications and in Washington, D.C., particularly on the Washington, D.C. cable channels that were talking about the value of business aviation to our nation's job base, uh, to communities, to our humanitarian effort. In October of 2009, we tried to move it to the next level by bringing in a national spokesperson, Arnold Palmer. Business aviation has allowed Arnold Palmer to compete in both business and in golf from a community with no airline service. And that, as Arnold Palmer would say, is the truth. I'm going to tell you something you haven't heard in a while, the truth about business aviation. The truth is that for more than 50 years, using business airplanes is the single most productive thing I have done. It's given me the opportunity to compete more effectively in golf and in business, and it's enabled me to do both from a place not served by the airlines. I'm Arnold Palmer, and I approve this message simply because it's true. The purpose of No Plane, No Gain is to help people understand that business aviation is essential. It's essential to our nation's job base. It's essential to the thousands of communities that need economic development, those thousands of communities that have lost all or substantially all of their commercial airline service. We want people to understand that the No Plane, No Gain program is about small companies trying to be productive and efficient. The airplane allows us to do three meetings in one day, not one meeting in three days. Business aviation is all about time. Uh, time wasted can never be recovered. Time saved uh, can be used for another project. Many times you can do as much in a business aircraft in one day, as you could do flying airlines in a week. We also want no plane, no gain to mean business aviation is fundamental to our nation's humanitarian efforts. Every day in the United States, business airplanes are flying organs to transplant patients. Every day, we are reuniting combat troops with their families. 
and every day we're flying cancer patients to treatment. In cases of emergency like Katrina or Haiti, business airplanes are there providing not just relief, but in sometimes life-saving equipment and medical personnel. The destruction in Leogon was so much greater that, I mean, these were people that, you know, until we brought tarps in, had nothing to sleep under. Until we brought food in, had nothing to eat. And we were flying four flights a day from Santiago into Leogon uh, with two caravans, uh, which equates to about 16,000 pounds of supplies. We had dozens of airplanes that delivered food and medical supplies to the region that saved countless lives. But we have a lot of passengers who are alive that came to the United States and received medical care and are alive solely because of business aircraft. The fact is, business aviation is 85% made up of small and mid-sized companies. Senior executives are only aboard the airplane about 30% of the time, meaning that 70% of the time, these airplanes are flying mid-level managers, flying technicians, engineers, salespeople. The benefits of business aviation are phenomenal. You know, in the last 30 days, I've been in uh, Brazil, uh, China, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Europe. And you just can't do that without business aviation. It is a tool that allows us to reach these far reaches of the world and build a foundation for growth that, uh, that is so important for our business as we push out into these developing markets. It allows companies to go to communities with little or no airline service. Business aviation allows you to turn travel time into work time. We're 15, 20 minutes from the airport, wheels up, and we're three or four hours from any place in the United States. It allows you to have a group of people in a closed environment and discuss proprietary information without fear of eavesdropping. And it allows you to move those kinds of products which are too big to fit in an overhead bin or maybe too sensitive to put in a cargo hold. The heart of the No Plane No Gain effort is really our website, www.noplanenogain.org. At this website, you'll be able to see all of the advertisements we've run, you'll get updates on what is going on with the No Plane No Gain program, and you'll have the facts. We'll have places there where you can find all the facts about business aviation, including the fact that it generates 1.2 million jobs in the United States and is responsible for over $150 billion worth of economic activity. You'll be able to find our studies, our surveys, and our tools, and you'll be able to see all of the advertisements, including the Arnold Palmer ads, which show that no plane, no gain. I think this is going to be a tremendous resource for all of you, and we urge you, go to the website often, download the information, and most importantly, share it with others. I believe strongly in no plane, no gain, because I lived the other side of that. We have a plane, we have gain. Clearly, the message of no plane, no gain is beginning to resonate. We're beginning to see United States Senators go to the Senate floor and extol the virtues of business aviation. Senators Brownback, Senator Dorgan, number of others, strong, articulate spokespeople for the value of business aviation to the United States. We're seeing mayors speaking out for business aviation in places like Ankeny, Iowa. We are a very fast growing community and because we have an airport, the third busiest airport in the state of Iowa, we need to capitalize on the opportunities that we have. And I believe that general aviation gives people that entrepreneurial spirit, gives them an opportunity to look to the future and know that it's bright because of general aviation. And we're seeing that the media is beginning to finally understand the message of business aviation. We're beginning to see news reports in major publications like the Denver Post, all the way down to small communities like Batesville, Arkansas, talking about the value of business aviation. We now know that our message can resonate. It can resonate with elected officials. It can resonate with the media. It can happen at the national level and at the local level. That's really what No Plane, No Gain is all about. It's taking the positive message of business aviation, delivering it to opinion leaders, to policy makers, and delivering it to the people in your community. To really be successful, we need you. We need everyone in the business aviation community to be a No Plane, No Gain advocate. NBAA will continue to be a leader in this, but we need your voice. Please join us in getting the word out, No Plane, no game.